Hi everyone, it's Miss W, and today's Artrageous Art Lesson is all about the Artist of the Month for January. The artist's name is Paul Action Jackson Pollock. He was an American painter, born in 1912 until 1956. Our learning goal today is that you will be able to learn about and understand what abstract, non-objective, and realistic art styles look like and how to make them. We also want to be able to create your own abstract or non-objective painting. The standards that we're going to be covering are how to identify real and imaginary subject matter in a work of art, how to describe the personal choices that we make in when we make our artwork, and how we can generate ideas and images for artwork based on memory, imagination, and experience. There's no artist better to study for that than Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock was born on January 28th in Cody, Wyoming in 1912. He was the youngest of five brothers and he grew up to be one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. All of these pictures, by the way, come from Getting to Know the World's Greatest Artist, written and illustrated by Mike Venenzia. Jackson Pollock is best known for the huge paintings that he made by splattering, throwing, and dripping paint onto his canvases. This is one of his paintings called Galaxy, which he painted in 1947. When Jackson was growing up, he moved all over the western part of the United States, including California. His family moved around and usually from one ranch or farm to another. No matter how much work needed to be done, Mrs. Pollock preferred to see her sons working on anything having to do with art. It was probably because of her encouragement that three of Jackson's older brothers also became artists. And here you can see Jackson's mother saying, I know you need help plowing the fields and slopping the pigs and mending the fence and building the new outhouse, dear, but the boys are doing their artwork. And the dad says, darn not again. So you can see she really encouraged their art, which is awesome. Jackson used old hardened brushes, sticks, and anything else he could find that would splatter paint the way that he liked. Later on, he went on to marry another artist named Lee Krasner, and they moved to New York, and they set up a studio in the barn of their home. There is where he developed a new type of painting where he was dripped paint onto the canvas all over the floor. This was called action painting because he could use his whole body, sometimes carefully dripping, swirling, and flinging paint around the canvas. This is a principle of art known as movement. So he painted with lines, the lines created texture, and those lines created movement in his artwork. And here you can see Jackson Pollock asking his wife, Lee, can I borrow these a minute? I just had a great idea. Uh, yes, uh, dear. <laughs> she looks a little concerned. Jackson usually tacked his canvas on the barn floor, which is kind of like a thicker paper. He liked to walk all around and also be in his painting while he worked. This way, Jackson felt that he was really a part of his artwork. Jackson, can you come to the phone? Later, I'm right in the middle of a painting. And you can see he's fallen into the painting, which is actually just a cartoon. Jackson Pollock always seemed to have trouble drawing things, too. No matter how hard he tried to make his drawings look the way he wanted, he just couldn't. It was almost like his hand and the pencil refused to do what he wanted them to. Unless you want to end up like them, you better do as I say, Jackson said. Uh, okay, okay. You can see all the broken pencils. So he got really frustrated trying to make things look real. Which brings us to the next question. What does abstract mean? Jackson's style of art is all often called abstract expressionism because Jackson moved around a lot and used so much energy when he painted. He preferred to call his style of painting action painting. Here's one of his paintings called Stenographic Figure where you can kind of see some shapes and lines and different designs. Drip dry. A Jackson Pollock makes you think, did someone spill a jar of ink? But look again and you might find beauty of a different kind. 
Nines are made with all these splatters. Finding seven is what matters. So can you look at these splatters and maybe use a little bit of math and make up seven? Let's see if you can count out and circle seven splatters. How could we combine these and, and circle those? Here's another one of his paintings called Blue, painted in 1943. And another painting, a very close up of a painting called Full Fathom Five. What do you think this is a painting of? How do you think that he felt when he was painting this? What do you, what makes you, what do you see that makes you think that? How did the artist paint this? And what elements of art do you see in this painting? He stopped naming his paintings after a while and he just started giving them numbers. So people would stop looking for meanings in his paintings, like stop trying to see a dog or a person. He said, when I'm in my painting, I'm not aware of what I'm doing. He would just feel the paint. Jackson Pollock is considered an abstract expressionist. His paintings are meant to inspire you to see what you see and not what anyone else sees. Learning checkpoint. Which one of these two paintings looks realistic? Which one of these paintings would you say is abstract? A or B? Jackson Pollock died on August 11th in 1956 in a car accident. He was only 44 years old. In November 2006, one of his paintings sold for $140 million, making it the most, world's most expensive painting at the time. Now, we want to create our own abstract splatter painting, but it can be extremely messy. So I'm going to show you one way to do your abstract painting on the computer, where you get to pick the elements of art that you're going to use. And then I'm going to show you how to do one of your own on paper. So to do your abstract splatter painting on the computer, we are going to go to www.jacksonpollock.org. So once you click on jacksonpollock.org, we are just going to use the mouse and every time you move, move the mouse, it will create a splatter painting on your canvas. As you are adding to your canvas, you want to think about color. When you click on the mouse, every color changes. So you can add lots of different colors, but you also want to add movement. And we want to fill the whole space on our canvas, just like Jackson Pollock did. Use your imagination, or if you want to make it look like something that you've seen from memory, you can use anything that you want to create your own design. Once we're finished creating our class design, I'm going to save a picture of it, upload it to Artsonia, and then I'm going to show you how to make your own splatter painting using a shoebox marbles paint. Now, I know you're all really anxious to get started, but I wanted to show you two quick things that will really help you that I got a lot of questions about. First of all, if you are working on your splatter painting, your digital splatter painting on jacksonpollock.org, let's say you start painting and you really don't like the way it looks. The only way I know of erasing or starting over is by clicking on the back arrow. Um, hopefully, maybe there's an easier way. If you find one out, please let me know. Otherwise, the back arrow will help you erase it. So once I'm finished with my design, let's say I'm done with this and I really like it and I'm happy with it. If you go down to the start button of your computer, you can type in snipping tool. This is the easiest way that I found to save a picture of your artwork. So it's called snipping tool. You're going to click on it. Once you click on the snipping tool, you'll have a little cross and at the bottom it says new and basically you're going to click and drag on the T shape and then once you let go it will save that picture for you and you're going to click file save as and give it a name so I'm going to call it abstract you can save it in your pictures folder 
by clicking on the down arrow. You can save it. Um, I'm going to just save it in my pictures here. Abstract splatter painting. And you're going to click save. Now, once you've saved your picture, like I said, I'm going to exit out. And we want to upload these to Artsonia. So now I'm going to go to artsonia.com slash class. And I'm going to type in our access code, which is HHJMCXJN for our school, which is Palencia. And then you are going to find your name. I'm going to type in an M. Let's say list all names here. I am in no grade. So I'm going to click in students. There's my name. And here's all my artwork. I'm going to click on add new artwork. This one I don't think has a name yet. So I'm just going to click on sketchbook and add that to sketchbook. I'm going to click find image. And I'm going to go to my picture folder. And I'm going to click type in part of the name, abstract splatter painting. I'm going to click on it and click open. Then I'm going to click upload. I know it's a lot of steps, but you'll get used to it. It'll become very easy. I like to, once my picture is uploaded, I like to auto fix it and you can brighten it and do some other things. But then I'm going to click accept and then I can enter in a title. I can click submit to teachers and my statement can be what I learned. I learned about Jackson Hall submit to teacher. And then I'm done. Then you can log out and you can play around more or you can save your drawing. So I hope that helped and I can't wait to see all of your amazing abstract splatter paintings on the computer.